Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jack Ford. The Catholic Church, once under the microscope for covering up past sexual abuse by priests, has now found itself under fire. Today, the Pope held meetings with a U.S. delegation of bishops and cardinals to discuss recent grand jury findings, which concluded that more than 1,000 children were sexually abused by hundreds of priests dating back decades in Pennsylvania. Pope Francis has also called for a February meeting of bishops from around the world to discuss how to stop abuse by priests and protect children, a first of its kind, highlighting the global scale of the problem. And Pope Francis himself is under fire for what he might have known about the cover-ups and when. New York State is home to about 7 million Catholics, and it could also be the next flashpoint in the sex scandal. Last week, New York Attorney General Barbara Underwood issued subpoenas to every Catholic diocese in the state, eight in total, as part of a sweeping investigation into how the church reviewed and possibly covered up allegations of sexual abuse of minors by clergy. Metrofocus's Jenna Flanagan spoke with Michael Resindes, a member of the Spotlight investigative unit that reported on widespread sexual abuse and subsequent cover-up in the Boston Archdiocese. She began by asking him about what the New York investigators are looking to uncover. Well, I think it's a very welcome development and also, I have to say, long overdue. I mean, after all, it is 16 years since the Boston Globe Spotlight team discovered that the senior Catholic prelate in America for decades had covered up rampant child sex abuse in the Boston Archdiocese. We know now the same thing happened in Pennsylvania, the same thing happened in Tucson, the same thing happened in Los Angeles, it happened in Ireland, it happened in Australia, it happened in Chile. In fact, everywhere someone has bothered to take a look, usually law enforcement, sometimes uh, journalists, we have found the same thing. This is systemic all over the world, it's a pattern. So as I say, uh, the other attorneys general getting involved, very welcome development. A lot of people still need justice, but long overdue. Well, interesting that you were saying that uh, this was been systemic in all these other cities, because after the attorney general report in Pennsylvania was released, the bishop of Pittsburgh came out and said, this actually isn't fair and necessarily correct because the Catholic Church has been very transparent in uh, reporting abuse and not covering it up and handling uh, things through the proper channels for at least the past 30 years. Are you saying that the Bishop of Pittsburgh is incorrect? I'm saying his statement is patently false. If he's correct, then why are we learning about all these atrocities in Pennsylvania for the first time? If the diocese in Pennsylvania were being transparent, this would be nothing new. But in fact, it's brand new. The other thing that the Catholic Church has said that it's done was issue, um, I believe it was the Dallas report. It was a system that was put in place for how abuse was meant to be handled. Did it go far enough, or was that something that maybe was put in place for PR reasons but never really followed through? Well, I do give the American bishops uh, credit for getting together uh, in 2002 and uh, promulgating the Charter for the Protection of Children and Young People. I think it was a very good first step. I think there were a lot of important uh, provisions in that charter. And again, I credit the bishops for publishing that document. Now, I don't think it's a perfect document, and I don't think all the bishops in America are adhering to all of its provisions. The most important uh, thing to note is that the bishops are not releasing all their documents on clergy sexual abuse. There is no transparency. There's no transparency until a district attorney or an attorney general uh, or a lawsuit is filed. There's no transparent, transparency until there's a civil investigation uh, or a lawsuit or an investigation by someone like the Boston Globe Spotlight team. What is the next proper step to ha happen? Because some people who are very passionate and very deep within their faith with the Catholic Church are sort of feeling like their faith and their institution that they've believed in for so long is somehow under attack secularly. Is that fair to say, or how would you frame this? Well, I think uh, in Boston, for example, the most conservative uh, devout Catholics did not have any ill will toward the Globe Spotlight team when we published our series. I think the most conservative, devout, passionate Catholics in the Boston Archdiocese saw correctly that it was Cardinal Law who had sullied an institution that they loved very much and continue to love to this day. My experience uh, with Catholics is that uh, they want this cleaned up. Uh, they love their church. They love their institution, and they want the whole phenomenon of clergy sexual abuse to be cleaned up. That's what they're after. Their bishops have not done that. The Catholic Church has not cleaned up this mess. The Vatican has done almost nothing. 
So it's really up to civil authorities to come forward and do what has to be done. I think most Catholics will welcome that. Bringing this back to, of course, the um, subpoenas that were issued by Barbara Underwood's office, is this something where we can expect to see survivors coming forward in mass and perhaps not only telling their stories, but asking for some sort of help or something in dealing with the trauma that they've been inflicted? Well, I think the victims are getting uh, some help, but I think what we're going to find, as uh, you suggested, is many, many more victims. I would say in a state like New York, I think New York has the second largest uh, Catholic population of any state in America. I think you're going to find thousands of new victims. And I think they're going to want some justice. And in many cases, they're going to want some redress. And in many cases, uh, they're going to want to file lawsuits uh, to get some compensation for the suffering that they've endured. You know, New York State has one of the most restrictive statutes of limitations when it comes to filing civil lawsuits uh, for child sexual abuse. You know, there's a big push in the New York legislature to get this law changed. It's being championed by uh, the attorney general. But there's been great resistance to changing this uh, very restrictive statute of limitations. And a lot of that resistance comes from the Catholic Church. Last question. Is this also fair to lay this just at the feet of the Catholic Church? There's been allegations of sexual abuse on the part of moral authorities towards children in various other religious sects as well. Yes, it's true. I think wherever there's uh, an institution uh, that's uh, secret to some extent, that's not accountable, whether it's uh, a religion, whether it's uh, the public school system, I think you're going to find child sexual abuse. There's no doubt about it. I think in the Catholic Church, the problem is especially pernicious, uh, number one, because the church presents itself as a uh, moral leader. And number two, the Catholic Church has this celibacy requirement, uh, which engenders a, a culture uh, of secrecy within the Catholic Church. So I think the Catholic Church also, especially because it is a worldwide global organization, I think the problem in the Catholic Church is especially, as I say, pernicious uh, and widespread. All right, well, listen, Michael, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Of course, thank you for the work that you and your Spotlight team did all those years ago. I would hope that this story doesn't continue to repeat itself, but of course, we shall see what comes of the Attorney General and the upcoming report. Well, I'll tell you that the story is going to repeat itself over and over all over the world. That's my prediction. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.